Hey there, my name is Sarah Duty, and I'm the founder of something called the UX Notebook, which is an education company that's dedicated to teaching people how to think like a designer because we don't need the word designer in our job titles in order to leverage the power of design to bring a lot of impact to whatever our roles are and whatever company we are at. So today I wanted to walk you through my own design process as I redesigned my website, theuxnotebook.com, using Wix. So let's dive in and I'm gonna show you my entire design process. Now, before I start any project, the one thing that I think about a lot is, what is the purpose of this website? Who is it serving? And what are the actions and goals that I have for the people who are going to be visiting this website. So what's the first step in the design process for me? It's a ton of research. And what does research look like? Well, for me, I already had been talking to my audience because I have a weekly user experience newsletter. I'd been talking to them weekly for four years. So I had four years of knowledge as to what they responded to, what they didn't respond to, things like that. But as I approached this website redesign, I hopped on the phone with some of the people who had been receiving my newsletter to get to know them a little bit more and understand their problems when it came to trying to learn more about user experience online. And through those conversations, I realized that people really struggle because there is a ton of information available everywhere. No one is really getting, doing a good job at bringing that all into one organized place and, and basically cutting through the noise. So as I set out to design this new uxnotebook.com, I really wanted to cut through the noise, give people bite-sized pieces of information that wasn't just kind of inspirational and theoretical, but that was very, very actionable. So I'm gonna show you some of the early wireframes that I created. If you're not familiar with wireframes, they're kind of like blueprints for what your website could be so that you're focusing on the content because the content of your website is the most important thing. Without good content, no one's going to stick around. So the wireframes, let's jump into them. Well, first let's look at a screen a site map. So this is very high level. I did this all very quickly, but a site map is really aimed at showing you kind of all the sections and pages or screens on your websites that you can see where they all are and how people might move between them and the relationships between them. So I had my homepage, newsletter, I had the idea of doing UX tips of the day, kind of like an article of the day, but more um, shorter and more bite-sized. And then I wanted to showcase my workshops, a store, an academy, this collaboration page, etc. So this was months ago when I had the grand vision of this website and you'll see how it evolved. So next, a wireframe. This is showing kind of the latest issue of the newsletter. Here kind of we're getting into the guts of the website. So again, it's not pretty, black and white. Who cares about the fonts? The point is that I was thinking about the content and I'm letting you peek into my world just so you're seeing these red kind of mental notes I left to myself. But I had thinking about, you know, my navigation, what were the sections of the website? This was going to be kind of a, a page that people would come to if they clicked on the UX tips link in the top navigation. And again, it's very rough. It's not even using English. It's using this filler content. But this allowed me to quickly wrap my head around the entire experience and the content. And also, it's helpful because it helps you collaborate more with your developers and understand, okay, I want to do this on this page. How difficult is that going to be? So this is an example of one of the detail pages for my little UX tips of the day. So I had a little tip here. You could navigate and go through all the tips. And then um, this was kind of going a little deeper for people that wanted more than just kind of the tweet length tip. It's almost like a mini article. So I kind of brainstormed all these details out. And if you're wondering what program I'm in right now, I'm in a program called Envision. 
it lets me take my kind of blueprints and put them into Envision so that I can link them up, make them clickable, things like that. So once I went through many versions of those wireframes, the next step was to think more about the visual design. So start to put in the real content, real um, photos, real um, videos, things like that. So you can see this is looking more realistic. I have real text. The UX Notebook wants to think like a designer. I had kind of place all their icons, but you can see it's starting to really, really come together here. Um, and then another thing that I really recommend after you kind of think about your content, do your wireframes, and start to think about the visual design. For me, I like to collect all my inspiration in one place. So again, I use this product called Envision, which makes me or allows me to make little almost mood boards. So here you can see I was able to add some text, you know, what I wanted this site to feel like. I wanted it to feel playful and curious. You know, we're not super corporate or boring. We're very clean and we're exciting and we're not sterile. Another important thing was that the site feels very human. And so then I started to collect all these little pieces of inspiration so that as I was collaborating with other people on this project, they would get a sense of, okay, this is the vibe we're going for. So I really encourage you, before you start to play around with the design, do a little bit of work to gather this inspiration because it will help you tremendously, help you stay on the same page with whomever else you're collaborating with on your website. And then this is really the final product. Now you can see we're in the browser, we're on the uxnotebook.com, and this is how it all really came to life. And one thing to point out is that it's very different from what I imagined the site would be in the beginning. If you go back and look at those wireframes and the kind of more visually designed screens, you'll see that some things are missing, some things have been added. So let me talk you through a little bit about um, what changed and why it changed. Because sometimes when you're making a website, you realize it is more important for me to launch this website than it is for me to have all these other pages and features inside it. And so for me, I quickly realized that in order to do those little UX user experience tips of the day, it was a lot more complicated than we previously imagined. So for me, that ended up coming out and you won't see UX tips of the day on here. But what is important is that the uxnotebook.com is a place where people can go to learn more about how I can help them learn to think like a designer. And that's really done in three ways. That's done through my newsletter, which is the main thing I want people to do on this website. So that's why when you come to the homepage, there is a strong, strong call to action. The only thing really on the middle of the page is to try and get you to sign up for my newsletter. But if you're not sure if that's for you, that's okay. Because what I do as I scroll down this page is again, this is thinking about the content. I'm trying to make a case, if you will, to let people know, okay, if you didn't sign up for the newsletter up top, here are some more reasons why you might consider signing up for it. But then as we keep going, I add in some more social proof. I have tweets of kind of thanks or kudos from people who have said that my newsletter is really helpful to them. And then at the bottom, this is kind of important, at the bottom here, it's not just, you know, the footer with a bunch of links, but I'm giving people other um, areas to explore if maybe they're not feeling like they want to sign up for the newsletter. So at the bottom, I'm using this as an opportunity, almost like a jumping pad for them to go in three different directions. They can maybe go check out my courses and workshops if that sounds interesting. Check out my Facebook group or go and explore some of my videos. So that's kind of just one example of how my design process really evolved as we went through redesigning the UX notebook and making those trade-offs because that's real life. You follow the design process, but sometimes you realize it's more important to launch 
than it is to have these two or three other features. And then just kind of deconstructing the homepage for you, thinking about what are the goals of each page? How can you try and encourage people to take action on those goals? And that comes through content. And that is why it's so important at the beginning of your design process to understand your audience, to do a little bit of research, then to think about your website just in that raw wireframe format, if you will. So that black and white, you can make wireframes in Keynote or PowerPoint or draw them out in whatever software you're comfortable with. But the point is that you focus on the content because if someone comes here and the content isn't very good, they're not going to stick around no matter how beautiful it may look. So that was my design process for the UX notebook. And in some of my next videos, I'll be telling you a little bit more about the process and talking through some more details of the user experience side of things. Okay, now we're inside the Wix.com editor. And one of the reasons that I decided to use Wix was because it meant that I didn't have to know how to code. Now I do know how to code a little bit, but in order for my site to work really well on mobile, and in order for it to be easy for my assistant and someone else to update, I wanted to use Wix because my assistant or other collaborators may not know how to code. So Wix was a great opportunity for us to use a tool that is really simple to use, doesn't require you to know how to code, and is literally allowing you to drag and drop things around as you want to update. So this is our homepage that we just went through. And you can see Everything is exactly as you saw it in that last part of the video. But like I said, the great thing is if we wanted to change this text, I could jump in or my assistant could jump in and say, um, I don't know, change the text, the ultimate UX newsletter. I don't know. It's kind of cheesy, but um, did I spell that? right? Yeah. Um, we could change the text really easily. We could move things around. We could change the font if we wanted. I don't know, we're using pop-ins. I really like pop-ins. But we could, what is that? I don't like that, but it's very easy to select your different fonts and see how it might look in other designs. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to go with Wix. That is how I use Wix to make the brand new version of the uxnotebook.com and walking you through my kind of design process so that even before you start working in Wix, I really recommend that you do some research, sketch out or draw out the really rough wireframes or blueprints of your site, think about the content first, and then jump into the editor because if you do all that beforehand, it will go much faster as you're actually designing and building out your site inside Wix. So thanks for watching. And if you want to check out Wix on your own or my website, the UX Notebook, you can just click the links in the description below and you'll be able to see both of those sites. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to respond and make sure that I answer all your questions. Thanks, guys.